Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. Today it is a warm, sunny day in Southwest Florida. It is 91 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 32 degrees Celsius. Uh, the heat index makes it just unbearable. And for that reason, I am inside uh, the house today. And what I want to do today is share with you kind of a, a recent journey that I've uh, taken. And that is in the, uh, the fragrance uh, of orchids. And it's just a general fragrance in really all plants. I'm, I'm a, just so you know, I've always been a fragrance gardener's gardener. So in um, my house in the Midwest U.S., I, uh, I grew roses, um, lilies. Um, I, I just, I just like the fragrance of plants. I like being able to, I just like the smell over all the fragrance. Um, but I also like being able to dissect the fragrances a little bit. Um, it's, it's almost like, you know, it's like, it's like wine. It's like everything else. When you partake of the sensation, you try to break it down and see what the components is and uh, components are and see what you can enjoy. Um, before we go, I, I guess I do also want to mention that I'm inside. Uh, you may hear it outside. They're, they're tearing my street up yet again. So I think they may be on break right now. But if you hear some noises just coming from uh, from outside, that's the uh, that's the tearing up of the asphalt in the street outside. All right, so back into uh, fragrances. Um, like I said, what I like to do is kind of uh, separate and dissect the components of the fragrance and figure out what I like. I I do like just general smells and fragrances. I've got the hardware to be able to detect this, and, and that's not what this is about. That's another issue. I've been working so hard to, to exercise my fragrance here that maybe I strained it. I, I don't know. Um, and anyway, in the laboratory, what's done for fragrances is they break down the components using various instrumentations. So you use um, typically a GCMS, which is a gas a chromatograph combined with a mass spectroscopy. And what the gas chromatograph does is that these are two kind of separate machines that work together. The gas chromatograph, what that does is that breaks apart all the different components. Uh, it, it separates them based on their properties. Uh, the mass, mass spec, what that does is it identifies the individual components. So again, one part of the instrumentation separates um, based on properties and the other one kind of breaks down their p components and does the analysis based on the bonds and the structure and things like that. So even, you know, in many of the, um, you know, many of the laboratories, people in, in my former department, people tried to break down the components of whatever compound, whatever solutions, compounds, uh, their fragrances they're dealing with, uh, whether it's uh, for medicinal value or aesthetics or whatever reason, break down the components and then identify them and quantify the different components that are that are in there. Um, so that's what you do in the laboratory. And the reality of this is that um, you don't do that. Well, you do that a little bit with orchid fragrance. So in the orchid world. Um, People are interested, researchers are interested in breaking down the components and seeing where the attraction is for pollinators. So you essentially look at the various compounds that the orchids are producing. You inject those into the GC mass spec and you determine what the various components are in order to, in order to really dissect what those fragrances are and then what essential pollinators or attractors are att uh, attracted to that flower. Um, for what I did here, here's my detection. Ah, that's my detection tool uh, right there. And, um, but that's what's done. You know, before, when I started looking into this and I, I had some good suggestions from uh, some of you guys, from some viewers on how I should approach this with looking at the various components of fragrances and um, uh, folks suggested looking at the perfume 
industry. And that's what I've done a little bit, and that's really an exciting area. Because what, what happens again in that area, in order to make the, per, the perfumes, people add the different components together and, and they react differently and they contribute to the fragrances that are associated with different perfumes. And when you take a look at some of the perfumes that are out there, uh, it's interesting. There are so many different components that are put together, different concentrations, amount, and, and you can get really an, an interesting combination. There's some similar things that are in most most perfumes, um, but there's some things that are added in small levels, and and what there's <laughs> there's just there's just mixing and all the different components, and then seeing what gives rise to the nicest perfume or fragrance, um, and whether that's what the orchids have done over their evolutionary career, probably the case to attract various insects. Um, with what we do. It now with hybridization, that's lost a little bit because these guys aren't relying on insect pollinators anymore. They're relying on, <laughs> they're, they're, they, they want me to come in and pollinate. And it, so it works in a different sense. I go through and see what flowers are fragrant and then I make the crosses. What I'm gonna try doing though, is taking notes on the fragrances of the different flowers and see what what the hybrids smell like and that's interesting there are some people that i have interacted with and talked to some orchid breeders that have tried their career to breed for fragrance and a lot of times that's just been a complete failure um, not necessarily with the Cattleya types, but with some of the other types. In order to, there are certain, for example, dendrobiums is, is right here. There are fr certain dendrobiums are fragrant. Certain Phalaenopsis are fragrant. Um, and there's really interesting fragrances that come from the different orchid families. But being able to breed this orchid that I just love the fragrance of with one of my or other orchids that has a different fragrance that is compatible. I don't know if you get a mix of the fragrance types or whether you get one or the other. Um, I just don't know how it works. The breeders tell me that it's difficult to do this. All that I'm trying right now is breeding orchids that are frips. One of the things that I look for in an orchid is color, it's flower, flower color, shape, plant growth, and vigor but it's also fragrance, and that's what I, I really like to incorporate in my work. It's, there's, to me, there's, I'm gonna do this more times, there's nothing like this. There's nothing like a fragrant orchid. This was outside on my and I. This, is, this really um, tolerates the high temperatures very nicely. Um, I didn't know, I thought I would bring this in the house, and I was worried that the cooler temperatures in the house would slow the release of the aromas from this flower. But um, I had this sitting here and I walked back into this room and it was the whole, I mean, the whole room smelled, I think, wonderful like this. Now you do have some orchids that don't smell great like this. And you have people that, for example, I can, I can ask 10 people and they're probably going to be, you know, a few that are going to say, ooh, that's stinky. I don't like that. But I really like the fragrance that comes from this orchid. Um, so it's, it's, it's fragrant, it's putting it out, it, you can bring it in the house and it really um, will provide fragrance to at least this whole room. I don't know how far it will go uh, in the rest of the house. It's a beautiful flower and, and, it is, uh, and it's open and it's doing nicely. So this is, um, and I've shared this flower with you in the past, and it seems to keep on hanging on. So, so this is Wainai uh, Leopard uh, Qinghua. And this, um, this the, there's a lot of flowers on this one flower spike, and I looked at it today, and there's still one, where'd it go? It's in there somewhere. There's still one bud that's not open. So this hasn't, oh, there it is right there. It's, it's here. I don't know whether you can see it or not. So this is, um, but this is, it's mostly open because they're, the flowers are so compressed on the spike, they're not, um, they're not opening quite all the way that they can. I would like to them extend out a little bit, but it's a nice small plant, pretty vigorous. Okay, let's get to the fragrance and what's here.
So orchids have, depending on the family, orchids have different types of fragrances. There's, uh, there's a classical uh, floral fragrance uh, that's kind of like a, it can, is a baby powder type fragrance that comes from, um, in many cases, the big cat layers. We're going to go and, and take a whiff of another one outside and tolerate the heat for a little while. And then there's this guy. And there's a little floral, there's a little, it's floral, it's sweet, but this is also um, either herby or earthy is, is what I like to call it. Um, and this is, this is a fragrance that I really, really like. Um, and again, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I will try to cross a big, um, a big cat layer that has more of the baby powder type fragrance with this that has a little bit more of an, of an earthy, mossy, um, herby fragrance. So it's, it's sweet. Um, so I would define this fragrance, it's, it's sweet um, and it is, it's herby or earthy. Um, and, but, and then there's, there's other, what I'm gonna do over time as I get better at this, is dissect the fragrances a little bit more. Um, I should say that you know the smell is the one, one fragrance. I'm really good at dissecting things. Um, I w I'm very good in the laboratory at um, colors and remembering how things look. Colors, densities, um, you know how how tissues reflect the light, things like that. And when and I got very good at doing the what I do in the laboratory because I could coordinate maybe around 15 different characteristics at the same time. I would try to train people how to do this and they could do one or two or three at a time. But if you can dissect the characteristics, whether, whether it's sight or fragrance, I think it just adds a whole new level of what you can do and how you can appreciate these things. So right now, I'm training myself, I'm learning how to do this. Um, one of the other things that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this plant um, to the laboratory tomorrow and I'm going to ask the people, I've got a lot of people visiting me in the laboratory tomorrow, and I'm going to ask them what if they, number one, if they like it and if they can dissect the fragrance, if they can tell me what it thinks like, what they think this smells like. I've had people tell me that there's citrus in here. and. I'm not, getting, I'm not getting citrus, to be honest with you, but I want to see what people say and I'll start collecting and start describing and I'll start doing things like this. Okay, so great fragrance. Um, as we move along, I'll try to describe the fragrances of the different orchids uh, that I have. And what I want to do now is take a little bit, bit of a break and we're going to go outside and look at one of my favorite cattleyas, a big flowered, colorful cattleya that's more of the, the baby powder, sweet, classical um, cattleya orchid fragrance. So let's, t I'm gonna, we're gonna take a book, take a break and take a look at that and uh, see what we have. All right, so let's go. And we're back. And so I am outside and it is, it's a little warm, so I just checked. It's 93 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is 34 degrees Celsius. Just check the heat index, it's 107 uh, degrees. Feels like 107 degrees with the humidity at the heat index, which I think is 43 degrees Celsius. Um, there is a little bit of a breeze, which is nice, but uh, hopefully we'll get through things pretty quickly. Um, this is the other, uh, th this is one of my favorites. Uh, this is Odom's Grand Delight. And the flower on this plant doesn't really look um, great, but um, I'm right here and I can smell this, the fragrance on this. This plant's usually loaded. It's got some, uh, I don't know if you can see, it's got a seed capsule here and a seed capsule here. So the seed capsules do maybe slow it down a little bit. So this, there's only one flower. On this new um, new pseudobulb that's coming out, there are one, two, three. I think there's five, four. I thought there were five pseudobulbs. I see four clearly, uh, and maybe I'm, oh, there's there's the fifth one right there. Um, 
So, th but this is this is a really vigorous plant. I use Odom's Grandalite in a lot of my crosses. Uh, I have yet to have any of them bloom, but I'm just I'm very hopeful. Uh, I like the flower. There's some flaring uh, in the flower itself. Uh, it, again, it's a big vigorous plant. Uh, but the thing, one of the things that I like about it, well, I like everything about it, but you know, the, the fragrance is phenomenal. So when I smell this, excuse me, oh my gosh, okay, this is a classical cat layer fragrance. So it's floral, it's got a little bit of a, of, of a baby powder um, uh, scent or fragrance to it. Um, and it's it's just really sweet. Um, I I have I need to dissect this a little bit more. I'm not really. Let me let me try it again. Now that's that's all I'm getting from this. Um, you know, it's the heat of the day, and it's still putting out a nice fragrance, and it's still tolerating this uh, pretty pretty well. Um, as I get into this a, a little bit more, like I say, I, I will be able to hopefully dissect the fragrances just a, a little bit more and, and give you a little better description of what's here. Um, one of the other things that uh, that I also wanted to share with you, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, take the camera. Off the uh, off the tripod, I do want to show you one other things with one other thing with a, a fragrant uh, dendrobium. So uh, I thought I was done, but not quite. So again, Odom's Grandelite, just a really nice, sweet um, baby frout, baby powder, ca classical Cattleya fragrance associated with this flower. And we're going to take a look at one more. Okay, and we're back. And the reason this this flower, this is a Dendrobium Wulang, and the reason this flower is is moving is because I just took a whiff. This one, I should say, this is the one I've been waiting for to bloom. It's mounted on my uh, Christmas palm. It's doing really uh, pretty well. This is the first bloom on this plant that was a keiki, keiki from the largest plant that I have. Um, I'm, I'll have a propagation video on dendrobiums from, from keikis as soon as I get this guy to make a few more. Um, but anyway, I, I smelled this and this is another one, one of the few dendrobiums at least that I've experienced where there's a nice fragrance associated with this. I've also used this in some of my dendrobium crosses, but I don't have a whole lot, so I'm kind of limited uh, with what I can cross onto. Anyway, I just took a quick, um, a quick sniff of this, and this to me, um, this has a, it's it, the closest fragrance that I have found to this is jasmine. So it, it's not quite as intense as jasmine and, and you know neighbors have and there's lot there's lots of different jasmine uh, fragrances on the plant usually when you you know when you smell jasmine it's um, you, you expect one thing and that's what this is but in reality different jasmine plants uh, have they have a lot of different fragrances and there's one actually that blooms in the neighbor's yard that is um, that's not quite a, a classical um, jasmine scent. It's a little, it has some other uh, undertones to it as well. But this, this smells like a little bit of a light uh, jasmine. It is, it's pretty, the fragrance on it is pretty strong. So I can go in here again, heat of the day, and it's still putting out a fragrance. A lot of orchids, uh, they only smell, um, put out their fragrance in the morning. Some of them at night. Uh, this guy, it's, it's, a, it, you know, it's kind of early afternoon, late morning, and this thing is putting out a nice, what I consider a recognizable fragrance. So um, I'm pretty, pretty happy with this. Okay, so that's all I have. I'll get more into the fragrances as we, uh, as we move along. And uh, that's all I have for today on orchids and orchid fragrances and our, the start of the journey into the different the different scents and fragrances of orchids. So that's all I have for today. If you liked the video and you want to keep on seeing them, it would help me out if you could click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. All right, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and happy propagating.